In the last video, I introduced a new concept that we're going to be incorporating as part of the show, this little thing called photo assignments. And I want to embellish on part of that today, namely the idea of photography sketchbooks. I've had people ask me questions about, you know, how big does the book need to be? How big are the prints going to be that I'm going to put in? And to be honest with you, it's really hard to answer because it's going to vary greatly from photographer to photographer. It's going to be a very personalized space for you to do what you need to do. A sketchbook should accomplish three things. One, it is a place to collect ideas. Two, it is a place to start working out and showing your thought process. And thirdly, hopefully over time you will start to see some improvement. And so this is why I think it will vary so much depending on whose book it is. Now, I think it might also help if we look at some well-known photographers today and some of the sketchbooks they keep so that can maybe give you some ideas on what you want to do. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I have three books that I want to share with you that will help give you some insight in how a sketchbook is very effective in the creative process of photography. And the first one that I want to share with you is Joseph Kudelka. This is a catalog from an exhibition that I saw at the uh, J. Paul Getty Museum in Los Angeles a few years ago. Incredible exhibition. And I remember going in, this is kind of the reason that I bought this catalog. I already have some Kudelka books. When you went into the exhibition, the first two rooms had these large plexiglass covered tables that can contained some of the early theater publications that um, Kudelka had worked for. And they also contained these early sketchbooks. And I had never seen these before, and they were just fascinating. Now, Kudelka, and they, I think these are reproduced probably about one-to-one, -one, best of my memory. They were about this big. Some people had asked about size. Well, it's as big as it needs to be to get done what you need to get done. But what you can see that Kudelka does in here and despite whether or not you can read his handwriting, is he's experimenting with composition and with cropping in here. And I don't know if you can tell from the video, but what this is, is it's a scene of a bunch of motorcycles riding around in kind of this course. And I guess, I assume they're racing. But anyway, he has these larger panoramic images that he has crop mark indications on. And then over on this page, there's different experiments with just literally cutting the contact sheet and experimenting with different compositions that he could he could he can make from those and so like some of them are really interesting like this one where he's putting the action and the motorcycles up clear near the top and you have this enormous amount of negative space and they're experimenting with possibilities and I think it's really cool because what you're seeing here is the thought process and something that Kudelka is reaching for in his own development as a photographer the next page is kind of interesting too you see these gentlemen uh, with their hands and not only is it three slightly different crops but it's also three different exposures so experimenting with that um, this is an interesting this little uh, collection of images over here with the stairwell and this wall and then the crop placed in there too so it's just a collection of ideas and it's a way of working things out not only the different crops the different exposures you know what is he trying to do how can the photograph be improved on and I assume the idea meaning, I mean, Kudelka is not a heavy manipulation darkroom guy, but what can he do when he's thinking behind the camera? And I think that's really interesting. These are assumptions I'm making, but you can, this is what I'm getting from his sketchbook. Another really interesting book is this one, which is called Photographer Sketchbooks. I got this on Amazon a few months ago. It's fairly new. It contains a ton of photographers. It's all featured alphabetically. And what's interesting to me is there are no two photographers who do this the same way. Everyone does it different, and sometimes they're radically different. Um, some of the big names you would know from this book are people like Alex Soth, um, Saul Leiter, um, Trent Park is in here. And I'm just going to go through a couple highlights that I've bookmarked. For instance, this one is just a day planner that's been used. A uh, day planner featuring an image. So you could do like a 365 type of project or just a journal and then some words written about what's going on in there. Sorry, this book's hard to manage. Um, another one that I found really interesting is this one where it's just photographs glued into a line rule spiral bound notebook. Something cheap you'd get at the grocery store with, with tape and handwriting on the cover. It doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to get across the point that you're trying to make. Um, this one's interesting. This is Saul Leiter and as many of you know he is one of my favorite photographers ever. Saul was also a painter and so his sketchbooks are largely consisted of paintings um, and that's how he sketched and that's how he worked out thought process. But you can can see that some of these were studies that impacted some of the color photography work that he did as well. And anyway, just really interesting in a very different way of thinking about it. Uh, he didn't put photographs in his sketchbook, he actually painted. 
Uh, this is Trent Park, uh, pretty straightforward, just Polaroids pasted into a book with, with words written on them. Um, and then he has some others that are kind of more like journals. You know, there's a, there's a million different ways you can do this. Another interesting person is Alex Soth. And Alec does this thing, it's not a journal at all, it's just a big wall with corkboard on it. And what he'll do at the beginning of a project is wipe this clean and during the course of the project he'll put all kinds of reference material. You see maps up here, you see tear sheets, just whatever, stuff printed out from the internet but it's a way of tracking his thought process as his approach to photography so there's a million different ways you can do this um you know what i would recommend is you're going to have to do some experiment to, experimenting to figure out what works best for you and that's totally normal and it's actually okay um, that's what you want to do um, one of the problems that i used to have early on with with keeping a journal is i would go to the store and i'd buy the expensive moleskin notebooks and then they'd be like pristine. I was afraid to touch them and afraid to mess them up somehow. And journals or sketchbooks or whatever you want to call these, they should be messy. It's capturing a thought process. Uh, you're trying to improve. You're probably going to have some dud photos in here. It's not going to be pretty at times. And if you're having trouble getting past that, I would recommend this book wholeheartedly. This is Carrie Smith. Um, she wrote this book called Wreck This Journal. And she's kind of turned this into a franchise of multiple books that you can wreck. Um, but Wreck This Journal, I actually haven't wrecked mine, but you start off by um, you know, early on you have to crack the spine, color this entire page, uh, eventually throw something at this, a ball dipped in paint, a pencil, something. You start to mess it up, uh, put leaves and other found things in here. Um, my six-year-old niece shoved cake into hers and she loved it by the way. Anyway, you eventually just completely damage the thing. At the end, when it's completely falling apart, you tape it back together and mail it back to yourself. And this is really cool because one, it gives you um, a certain relationship with your journal, understanding that things can get messy. And two, it opens up a lot of creative ideas and you're supposed to try to push yourself, and that's what she's teaching you through doing this, pushing yourself in directions that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise, or really trying to expand that creative thinking. Um, glue it back together and mail it to yourself, you're done. Anyway, I will put links to all these in the show description, and I recommend them all, and I hope that gives you a little bit of insight into um, a physical journal. I hope this gives you some inspiration and a good starting point for developing your photography sketchbook. These are a little bit of an extra effort to maintain, but I promise it's worth it in the end when you start seeing the results. Now, there is one other thing I want to address. In the last video, I talked about doing an online digital version of your sketchbook as well, and I suggested that you sign up for a Tumblr account. The comments exploded, and you think this was probably the most evil thing I've ever suggested on this show. And guys, there is a social, or there will be a social element to the photo assignments that we're going to do. I have not told you what that is yet. We haven't done any work. What I did say in that video, and I realize it may not have been clear, is I suggested you sign up for the Tumblr account. One of the perks for doing or one of the reasons, one of the advantages for having a Tumblr account is one, it's really easy to use, and there is a social element that is built into it. The thing is, I don't really care what you use. You can use anything. If you're more comfortable with WordPress, use that. If you have a Squarespace account, you can use that. If you can hand code HTML and want to do your own thing, you can do that. If you're comfortable with Flickr, you can do that. I just mentioned Tumblr because it's an easy place to collect images that you're going to be working with throughout the course of the project. So I hope you don't hate me. I hope we're okay. And I hope that clarifies a few things. I will talk about the social aspects of this when we get further along. As you can already see, if I'm asked what platform you wanna do it on, everybody's gonna give me a different answer. And the actual answer is that we are going to involve several different platforms when all is said and done. But I'm going to tell you what that is once we are ready to do that. So anyway, I hope that clarifies that a little bit and makes some sense. If you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it, don't be mad at me, and subscribe to The Art of Photography for more videos. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, later.